Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and this week we get yet another build for the patch 10.1 over on the PTR. This major content update is set to release in just two weeks, with the most recent build getting the stamp of approval, becoming an official candidate build set to go live very soon. This newest PTR update features even more massive class changes, with a new global class-wide adjustment to improve the gameplay experience for many healing playstyles. New PvP gear has also been added into PTR, with even more support for open-world PvP content. This week features many class updates, with major healing increases, tier set changes, and PvP-specific revamps. If you're planning to return for the patch 10.1 and are trying to find your next main going forward, then this video is going to go over all of the newest and the most impactful class changes from this most recent build to keep all of you informed about how our favorite classes are developing so far. But right before that, most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you are mine, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway, especially if you want to get more regular content regarding all of the newest Dragonflight updates and changes going forward. First of all, before we dive into class specific changes, patch 10.1 is going to increase everyone's stamina globally by 25%. This means that every class natively gains additional health. The damage of creatures in the open world, raids and dungeons will also scale by 25%. This stamina increase will primarily affect healers and is implemented to help mitigate healer effectiveness. To explain this change in better detail, healers have proven themselves to be quite powerful so far in Dragonflight. Most healing playstyles can top their allies with ease without spending too much mana in the process. Currently, the only way to challenge healers is to force them to counter large group-wide damage spikes, but that can result in less than satisfying gameplay. This stamina change allows for much better damage intake inside of most encounters while giving healers the ability to make impactful gameplay choices when trying to maintain the raid or party. With this new global change, tanks and DPS are being tuned to be less impacted by the stamina increases. First, we have the spec of Blood Death Knight, which is gaining additional healing through Blood Plague, Relish and Blood, and Voracious to help counteract the healing adjustment. The spec of Frost is seeing its tier set reduced slightly. The 2 set increases the damage of frost from summoned by 10% less, while the 4 set loses 5% from the critical damage increase bonus. The unholy tier 4 set bonus also slightly loses on its additional sudden doom interactions. Vengeance Demon Hunter gains additional healing, with Fell Dev, Feast of Souls, The Hunt and the Healing of Soul Fragments increased by 25%. Charred Warblade's passive gains additional fire damage healing value which may synergize well with the new tier set bonus. Every hybrid druid spec gains additional healing, with regrowth, swift mend, rejuve, wild growth and protector of the pack applied to guardian, feral and balance. Guardian druids gain additional healing with lunar beam, elune's favored, bramble's reflect effect and ursoc's fury. Feral druids also gain additional buffs this week with base abilities like Shred, Rake, Swipe, Brutal Slash and Thrash buffed by 2%, with Lunar Inspiration increased by 5%. Single target damage of Rip is increased through Dreadful Bleeding, but its spread value is lowered with the decreases to the Terror Open Wounds. Devastation Evokers are gaining new buffs this week, with Feed the Flames procking its Firestorm effect more often. Snapfire damage increase has been buffed by 60%. Certain blue spells have been adjusted, with Shattering Star cooldown and Scintillation proc damage slightly reduced. Devastation's hybrid healing has also been adjusted with this most recent stamina change. Sadly, the class of Hunter is seeing nerfs this week in the patch 1001 PTR, with Marksmanship losing haste from the In the Rhythm, reduced from 15% down to 12%, and Windrunner's Guidance procs of True Shot last 6 seconds in duration instead of 10 reducing the overall uptime of True Shot. Survival Hunter 10 1 tier set has also proven to be quite potent, and it's losing both the Kill Command and Wildfire damage procs from its 2 set and the 4 set bonuses. Brewmaster and Windwalker Monk's hybrid healing has been upgraded, with most healing effects increased by 25% to counteract the stamina increase. 
Brewmaster in particular gains far more value from Celestial Fortune, increasing its effectiveness by 15%. Protection and Retribution Paladin's healing has also been increased, with Flash of Light and Ward of Glory adjusted to the new stamina values. Protection gains additional value from Moment of Glory and Bulwark of Order Absorption effects, and Light of the Titan's periodic healing increase. The spec of Shadow Priest gains additional healing, with instant cast effects like Power Word Shield, Renew, and Prayer of Mending buffed by 25% and with Flash Heal increased by 50% instead. Then we have the class of Shaman, where we see additional changes like talent adjustments, healing increase, and tier set changes. First, Earth Grab Totem cooldown has been reduced, readily available every 30 seconds instead of 1 minute. Both the specs of Elemental and Enhancement gain additional hybrid healing, with new buffs to Healing Surge, Chain Heal, Healing Stream Totem, and Earth Shield. Elemental tier set has also been adjusted, with the two set Stormkeeper effect gained automatically every 50 seconds instead of 40. The four set also saw slight reductions to Maelstrom Generation. Enhancement Shaman tier set has also been reduced, with a portion of its power transferred back into the enhancement directly with the 4 set reducing physical and fire damage increases from 30 to 20%, while empowering your next 2 chain lightnings instead of 3, though the base enhancement damage is being increased by 5%. Just like every other class, Warrior's self survivability has also been adjusted to compensate for stamina increase, with Ignore Pain gaining 25% more value. Though certain percentage base heals are reduced slightly to counteract their natural gains with a bigger health pool. Protection Warrior's tier set has also been bolstered, with the 2 set reducing the cooldown of last stand by 2 seconds instead of 1, and the 4 set gaining a longer duration of earthen tenacity, with the earthen smash shockwave increased by 300%. This recent build also brought with it a flurry of PvP specific changes, from new armor sets which you can collect through open world content, additional consumables usable in war mode, new PvP trinket set bonus, which has adjusted its stamina value to correlate with the new global stamina increase, as well as quite a few new class changes. Demon Hunters see reductions, with most crowd control effects like Chaos Nova, Sigil of Misery, and Imprison reduced down to 3 second durations. The PvP Town of Blood Moon has also been redesigned. Consume magic affects all enemies near your current target, generating a lesser soul fragment. Each effect consumed has a small chance of upgrading the soul to a greater fragment. Just like Demon Hunters, Monk see control reductions as well with Leg Sweep and Grapple Weapon reduced down by an additional second, with Perpetual Paralysis PvP Talent adjusted, reducing the range of Paralysis by 5 yards, but increasing its secondary target range within 10 yards of your primary target. The class of Rogue has seen quite a few changes for PvP this week, with a mixed bag of talent adjustments. Dagger in the Dark has been redesigned. Previously, stalking your target in stealth increased their vulnerability to your next ambush, stacking up to 40%. This new version causes the enemy to take damage from all of your sources, not just ambush. The debuff will last for 10 seconds after your opener, and the maximum damage taken is increased by 12% instead. Veil of Midnight has also been redesigned, where Cloak of Shadows allows you to remove harmful physical effects like bleeds and certain slowing effects and grants you an increased dodge chance similar to evasion. Maneuverability has recently been downgraded, reducing the cooldown of sprint but also its duration down by 50%, which makes this talent decent if you ever need a quick burst of movement, but this iteration seems like a weaker version than the ability to break slows and rooting effects. Dismantle Disarm Duration has also been reduced down to 5 seconds to match every other class and the Subtlety Rogue Distracting Mirage PvP Talent Slow has been increased by 60%. Finally, we have Warriors, where Shockwave Duration has been increased to 3 seconds within PvP, making it far more usable, and Disarm Duration has also been reduced down to 5 seconds. Fury Warriors PvP Talent of Deathwish has also been adjusted to make it more playable. The talent has a shorter cooldown of only 4 seconds. Each stack of Death Wish increases damage done and taken by 10% per stack, with the stacking up to a maximum of 5 times. 
This change allows you to reach maximum stacks of Death Wish far quicker, giving it a little bit more usability within PvP content, as long as self-survivability isn't your primary concern. And for now, that's gonna be all of the newest class changes for the most recent patch of 10.1 over on the PTR. I want to thank all of you so much for watching this video and hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you picked your main going forward for the patch 10.1 or are you still searching? And which classes are currently on your radar as a potential main candidate? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.